We proved the Big Bang. We proved the Big Bang. Actually, that's not what we did. We didn't? Oh. Mm. We spotted gravitational wave fingerprints. We spotted grav... Is that better? Hmm. Howdy everyone, I'm Trace and I am here with Dr. Ian O'Neill, space producer from discoverynews.com and this is a special weekly space update. Welcome. Thank you. Monday was a crazy day. People were excited, they were celebrating and not just because of St. Patty's Day, but because of a discovery in the field of astronomy. Right, so it's been theorized for a long time that the Big Bang was followed by a rapid expansion of the universe called the inflationary period, which accelerated the expansion of the universe faster than the speed of light. So it grew in size in a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a nanosecond, billions and billions and billions of times, huh. faster than the speed of light. But for the Big Bang Theory to actually work, you had to have that inflationary period. And there's been some observa observational evidence for it, and one of them is the cosmic microwave background radiation. Yeah, and th so this is all in cosmic inflation theory. So the idea that everything in the universe is expanding from the moment the Big Bang happened, and it's all expanding away from everything else, mm -hmm. and that the edge of our observable universe is cosmic microwave background radiation, or what we sometimes call CMB. It's sort of like a leftover heat signature from the Big Bang, right? Like, like an echo. Now this is where things start to get really exciting. There's a very sensitive telescope near the South Pole called BICEP2, and it's set up to look at this CMB to actually look for polarization signatures mm -hmm. in, in this afterglow of the Big Bang. And that is predicted, well, it's theorized that th this polarization change, these little squiggly patterns in the uh, cosmic microwave background radiation are actually caused by gravitational waves. Okay, so the gravitational waves which were predicted in Einstein's general theory of relativity, yes. if I recall correctly, and they're ripples in space-time. So like something giant hits something else giant, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, two black holes? Two black holes, you know, getting smashed smashing together, and they produce these waves that ripple away at the speed of light and they should be detectable. But unfortunately, up until uh, now, we haven't been able to detect, directly detect these gravitational waves that are supposed to pervade the entire universe. Wow. We should be able to detect them, but we can't find them. One of the biggest discoveries with the BICEP2 telescope is the fact we've found observational evidence that these gravitational waves do exist in the CMB. But, even more exciting, it kind of ties into a few um, physics paradoxes that we've been, we've been questioning for quite okay, a few years. Okay. And these gravitational waves could have quantum origin. I don't know what that means, but it sounds fancy. All right, to explain, grab the balloon, Trace. Got it, got it. Balloon. Now, this is our balloon model of the universe. It's very this small. is around the time of the Big Bang. We've got a little lonely graviton just here. He's inside, he's just after the Big Bang occurred, he's jumbling around in the universe. <laughs> And so basically this balloon represents the universe. As it expands, the, the graviton, as you can see, is getting stretched. And if you think of this as the um, cosmic microwave background, what was once a graviton is now expanded with the fabric of the universe to a modern day equivalent of a gravitational wave. Cool. So this is what we mean by gravitational waves having a quantum origin in that just after the Big Bang, these quantum sized gravitons expanded and 14 billion years later in we're our just current now universe, finding them. we're just seeing them etched in the furthest most limits of the universe. <laughs> okay, so, but before the commenters get to asking, where is this gravity coming from? Well, this is the really exciting thing for me, is that this is um, potential evidence for you know, a, a quantum um, origin for these gravitons. And this ties into some questions that physicists have had for many decades. How does gravity fit in with the quantum world? So this BICEP2 result actually gives suggestive evidence that perhaps these gravitational waves come from a, a, a quantum origin, which means gravity has a quantum state. Hmm. Although we, we're still looking for further evidence for this, this is at least an indication that right back at around the time of the Big Bang, these gravitons did exist, and perhaps they interacted with matter on quantum scales. Very cool. So scientists have discovered super strong evidence of the Big Bang, mm -hmm. and the inflation theory, and they found gravitational waves, and they potentially found the first observational proof of quantum gravity all at once. As an astronomer, one in a day's work. Can we use any of this information to find out what happens, like, you know, socks lost in the dryer or anything? No. Oh. So there's not a lot of practical 
No, no practical this use, point. I'm afraid, Trace. Well, science is still, you know, pretty good, I guess. So thanks for watching D News, everybody. Let us know what you think. And hey, do you want to watch D News on the go and possibly win a cool prize? Because we are giving away a DVD box set of Life on Earth. Just go to the first link in the description and download the app from the iTunes store. Bonus points to people that rate the app and leave a review as well. Then comment below, let us know that you did, or you can come tweet at us at DNews. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya.